We're about to find out what happens when two behemoth smartphones go toe to toe. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Sony Xperia Z Ultra versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. It never fails. There's always that one commenter who is up in arms over the fact that we sometimes pit old hardware against new devices, like the new Nexus 7 comparison against the iPad Mini from last year. The fact of the matter is, these are often the best comparisons with the biggest contrasts, that just so happen to show how far technology has come in a short while. Sometimes they also prove the opposite of what you might initially assume. And that's exactly why we're comparing the most recent oversized phone with what many consider to be the gold standard in the category. The Xperia Z Ultra vs the Galaxy Note 2. Which one of these gigantic phones comes out the victor? Let's find out. Before we get too far into this, however, we'd like to thank our friends at Negri Electronics for lending us an Xperia Z Ultra for a review period. Be sure to check out the site at negrielectronics.com for mobile devices and accessories. As far as hardware concerns go, there is only one major similarity between the Z Ultra and Galaxy Note 2. They're both significantly larger than your average smartphone. The Z Ultra measures 179.4mm tall and 92.2mm wide meaning it's a full 28.3mm taller and 11.7mm wider than the Note 2. On the other hand, at 6.5mm thick, it's nearly 3mm thinner than a 9.4mm thick Note 2. And being composed mostly of glass on the front and back, it weighs much more than Samsung's smartphone tablet combo device. 212 grams to the Note 2's more respectable 183 grams. All of this means something quite significant. Size is everything. When you compare the size of the Z Ultra to the size of your hand, to the size of your pockets, and the size of everywhere you would normally stash your phone, it poses a problem. The Galaxy Note 2 was once considered to be too large by many, but over time it has become accepted as the norm. It fits in our pockets with room to spare. With a little practice and the aid of the curved back, we can use the device one-handed, and the button configuration is quite ergonomic. We have to struggle to fit the Z Ultra in our pockets, and we're forced to readjust often, especially when sitting down. There's no hope of using the device one-handed, and the rectangular design lends no help in that respect either. The button configuration, similar to the much smaller Xperia Z, is quite odd as well. The difference is substantial. The Galaxy Note 2 is two parts phone to one part tablet. The Xperia Z Ultra is the exact opposite, two parts tablet and one part phone. And we can't necessarily fault it for that. It's great at what it's designed for, but there's no denying that its design severely limits the number of potential buyers. Composition is quite different as well. The Z Ultra, like its Xperia brethren, is covered with two slabs of glass, one on the front and one on the back, and the edges are made up of a matte finished plastic for extra grip. The result is a superb build quality. Likewise, the Note 2 is just like its closest Galaxy siblings. It's made mostly of plastic and coated in a hyperglaze finish. Its edges, unlike the Z Ultra, are rounded, making it much more comfortable to hold, size aside. And the end result is a device that doesn't necessarily feel spectacular in the hand, but other features more than make up for it, such as the S Pen. Both are also fingerprint magnets, which we're not exactly fond of. But there is one area where the Z Ultra is the clear winner. Specifications. It comes with a Snapdragon 800 chipset, composed of a 2.2GHz quad-core crate CPU and Adreno 330 GPU, 2GB of RAM, 16GB of built-in storage with a microSD card slot, IP55 and IP58 dust proofing and water resistance ratings, an 8MP rear camera, 2MP front-facing camera, a 3050mAh battery, and Wi-Fi BGN AC. The Galaxy Note 2 has a 1.6GHz quad-core Exynos chipset, comes in either 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of storage, expandable by way of microSD card, 2 gigabytes of RAM and 8 megapixel camera, 1.9 megapixel front camera, 3100 milliamp hour battery, and only Wi-Fi BGN. And then there's the displays. Measuring 5.5 diagonal inches at a resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels, the Galaxy Note 2 offers a pixel density of 276 pixels per inch. The 6.4-inch display on the Z Ultra comes with a 1080p resolution and offers 344 pixels per inch. The display on the Z Ultra is markedly more crisp, with no visual signs of pixelation. However, the AMOLED panel on the Note 2 offers deeper blacks with more saturation. Both are quite bright, though we give the edge to the Z Ultra. And in the Z Ultra's defense, the Mobile Bravia Engine 2 helps boost saturation when viewing photos and videos. We have to give it to the Galaxy Note 2 for overall usability and practicality. 
However, the display of the Z Ultra and the superior design and build quality make it a very close match. Though the software offered on both of these smartphones doesn't look all that similar, the features beneath the surface put them on a fairly level playing field. At its core, the Z Ultra is running Android version 4.2.2 beneath Sony's expansive customizations. If you've used an Android-powered Sony device in the last year or so, you'll be able to find your way around fairly easily. Not a lot has changed. The same icons and widgets are present as found on the Xperia Z, ZL, and Tablet Z. And the ever-so-slight changes to stock Android are scattered about the system. And, lest we forget, Sony's skin comes with various themes that allows the user to change the look and system accent color between Quartz, Amber, Emerald, Sapphire, Silk, Xperia, Amethyst, and Ruby. The Galaxy Note 2, running an older version of TouchWiz, is two-point versions behind the latest version of Android. It's running Android version 4.1.2, meaning it's missing some of the latest features, like lock screen widgets and daydream mode. But, like any version of TouchWiz, it will be familiar to anyone who has used it in the last two years. It has the same icons, widgets, wallpapers, and pre-installed applications. Between the two, the offerings are quite the same. Pull down the notification shade and you have a set of quick setting toggles. You can adjust which toggles appear and their order on both devices. You can customize the number of home screens. Both also have battery saving software, the Z Ultras is called Stamina and the Note 2's is simply called Power Saving Mode. Taking advantage of their larger displays, they both offer unique ways of multitasking as well. The Z Ultra offers Sony's small apps. Hit the recent apps button and the various small apps are accessible at the bottom of the display. The Note 2 has the multi-window feature, which splits the display in half and allows two applications to run simultaneously. You can also hold the button on the S Pen and double tap on the display to open an S Note atop any application. There's hardly anything between these two on the software side, but we have to hand it to the Xperia Z Ultra for the lower DPI setting out of the box, which squeezes more information on the display, plus it has DualShock 3 wireless controller support built in to boot. In daily performance, the two devices offer enough horsepower for standard activities. Emailing, web browsing, text messaging, taking and sharing photos, and other typical stuff. When you get into heavy multitasking or gaming, there's a great divide. The Snapdragon 800 delivers significantly more power to the Z Ultra than the Exynos chip does to the Note 2. This is evident in both synthetic benchmarks and to the naked eye. We've experienced no lag on the Z Ultra, but the same can't be said for the Note 2. However, we must note that we have been experiencing some touchscreen issues with the Z Ultra, even after several factory resets. Battery life is still up in the air. The Galaxy Note 2 is most notably known for its exceptional battery life, at least by today's standards. It's a full day plus kind of device. We're not so sure about the Z Ultra just yet. We've had to factory data reset the Z Ultra a handful of times now and it's gotten in the way of testing the battery data. At least on paper though, these two offer similar capacities. 3050 milliamp hours in the Z Ultra and 3100 milliamp hours in the Note 2. It's difficult to say how the 6.4 inch 1080p display and the Snapdragon 800 will affect the sort of capacity just yet, so keep an eye out for the full review next week. Finally, the cameras. Both devices come with 8 megapixel cameras. In terms of hardware, the biggest difference is the lack of an LED flash on the Z Ultra. In software, they both come packed to the brim with effects, filters, shooting modes, and other settings to tweak. But at the end of the day, the Note 2 has a marginally better camera, mainly because it's easier to wield when shooting. The Note 2 offers truer to life colors, but was quick to overexpose and was subject to blurry images. The Z Ultra often aired on the very cool side and offered no more detail or stunning images than the Note 2, where one fell short, the other picked up the slack, and vice versa. There's no denying the Xperia Z Ultra is a phenomenal piece of work, and the sales and popularity of the Galaxy Note 2 should speak to its quality as well. So which of these smartphones do you feel is the best overall? We choose the Galaxy Note 2. As great as the Xperia Z Ultra may be, it's impractical. Sony basically took all the great things about the Xperia Tablet Z and crammed it down into a tighter, neater package and decided to market it as a phone. And that's where the problems with this device begin to start. It's simply too big for comfort. That's partially subjective, but we feel those who disagree with the statement will be few and far between. It doesn't comfortably fit in our pockets, and it isn't ergonomic at all. We felt the Galaxy Mega 6.3 was borderline too big, and we were right. 6.3 inches is too big to still be considered a smartphone. The phone has a DPI setting more along the lines of a tablet, and as a result it often runs tablet applications instead of phone apps. So if you're willing to carry around a small tablet everywhere with you, the Z Ultra may be the best device for you, period. Otherwise, we suggest sticking with the Galaxy Note 2 for a more phone-like experience. 
That's all we have time for, so if you enjoyed it, let us know by clicking the thumbs up button below, and stay tuned for the full Xperia Z Ultra review next week. Follow us on all the usual channels, Facebook, Google+, and Twitter at PocketNow. You can find me on Twitter at CasperTech. I'm Taylor Martin, and I'll see you next time. Oh my gosh, that was like 30 takes.